In that previous episode, I stumbled upon one of my favourite ideas. Uh, so I'll make mention of it as an episode in and of itself. Uh, but, um, and it's an oldie, but it's a goodie. And everybody knows that, you know. But um, it, there'd be no point making this episode here um, if I wasn't going to give it a twist, you know, because everyone already knows this one. Um, this oldie, but this goodie. And that is, you know, the two different truths can both be true at the same time. And, and the example in the previous episode was the cricket is just a, just a stick and a ball. Absolutely true. You know, so, you know, someone can say that, you know. Cricket is it's just a stick and a ball. <laughs> you know, end of, end of conversation, you know. It's finished. That's all it is. But then another person over here can say, Cricket is deeply cultural, deeply cultural, as cultural as religion, dance, song, uh, dress, anything else you've got cultural, you know, end of, <laughs> and chop that person off, you know what I mean? Now, I don't think the two people like that are not going to fight. They're both right. They're both right in different ways. Um... And if you meet someone down the street who doesn't like cricket, and you do like cricket, you're not likely to get in a fight. You're not going to road rage someone you know, down in your coffee shop strip over something like that. You know, there's something about the way we interact as humans that prevents us from wanting to do that except in extreme cases. You know, but it's when you put some distance between you and the other person. When you make the other person a little bit virtual, you know, two per someone will cut someone off down the street and um, in, while they're walking along and someone will walk in front, oh, you know. Um, but if someone does it in their car, now I know you can get killed in a car, you know, but 99 times out of 100, it's not a life and death moment when people lean on their horn, 99 times out of 100. And I know that because I've never used the horn in my car. And, uh, you know, if there was a life and death situation uh, presenting so frequently that, you know, a horn is so required, I would have used it once, surely. I've never had anyone cut me off, never, in um, so closely that it's been dangerous, you know. Um, every time I've been hit in a car, it just I've just been wiped out, you know. There's no time to hit the horn at all, you know. I've either been wiped out, <laughs> that's only been a few times, and I've wiped a few other people out too. Um, you know, it's either, oh, that's my experience anyway. You either, you know, you T-bone the priest. <laughs> I did that once. Um, and I cut a hole in the side of his car, you know. Um, or you get T-boned by someone else, you know, that happened to me too, um, and my wife as well when she was just young. We didn't tell her parents, um, and um, she was only about 17, and uh, and we were just driving along the street, but straight, <laughs> bang, the front of the car caught fire. I just, uh, I just couldn't, we couldn't tell her parents. We hopped out, and then, and then I was trying to rescue the battery. It was my sister's car. And then I just put a brand new battery in there, and I, I could see it, you know, because the bonnet was all crumpled up and everything, but the battery was still fine. Then I had just bought it, you know, so uh, there was a fire on the other side, and I was just going, oh, and my, and, uh, dad, oh no. <laughs> my wife pulled me away. Jeez, I tell you what, history repeats. Yesterday, the oven caught fire because <laughs> I was cooking something. I'm not a good cook. Um, and um, it was a huge fire. I was cooking some steak. Oh, beautiful steak, you know. Um, and I haven't had steak for a while. You know, I'm, I'm a carnivore. And, oh, yeah. Um, and um, oh, lockdown steak, you know. And... Um, and I don't know what it is about olive oil and steak fat, 
but it makes this massive fire. Anyway, I opened the thing, a whoosh, big fire came out, and um, it actually did make it all black, all the knobs and all that sort of stuff. And my wife, you know, she did a Deborah. Have you ever seen that episode in Everybody Loves the Raymond? Ah. Oh. Anyway, she came over with a. Um, the, she came over with the fire extinguisher, and all the kids were there. Ah, you know. And and I'm saying it's all right, it's all right. And I'm, I've got the the mitts on, and I ah, I gotta get my steak, you know. And still catching fire. I knew what I was doing. You know, I was gonna bring it over onto the sink. This is last night, not the you know, my my wife and uh, myself when we get together. It's uh, it's fire. <laughs> anyway. Over, you know, I was getting over the thing, and she was just about to press the trigger. She'd pulled the pin on the fire extinguisher, and I said, "No, <laughs> you're going to wreck my steak." She said, "A three thousand dollar oven and a fifteen dollar steak. What the hell are you thinking about?" And I, I, I pushed her hand away. I pulled it out, and it was still a catch and fire. Whoa, you know, and smoke in the kitchen. I put it over there. A lot like the battery, actually, Natalie. <laughs> I'm just saying that in case Natalie sees this, my sister, you know, because it was her car that I mangled. Um, I did, and he did, the other guy. But there's been other occasions where I've done it. Um, but um, so I got it over on the sink and had the roaring fire. I, mean, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to, I, I didn't know what the effect of water would be. Um, I'm not a chemist. And, um, and then, uh, and I got, I got the fire out. And, and my wife didn't you know, wreck the, you know, didn't use the fire extinguisher in the end. And my son, ever since, has been saying, Dad, a 3,000, a 3,000, you were prepared to sacrifice a $3,000 oven for a $15 steak, you know, quoting my wife, you know, his mother. And I'm saying, Alex, man. It was a beautiful piece of steak. And then he, he's got, he's got my wife's eye. Um, oh, that priest, though. Um, I felt bad about that. You know, and, 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 and that was one of those moments, and I have been bad in my life. Is the statute of limitations <laughs> up yet? <laughs> look, look, he did turn in front of me. <laughs> he did. He, you know, like you're going through, and I raced the yellow light, you know. And he was an older gentleman and such a lovely guy. Technically, he did the wrong thing, but, you know, I was, uh, I was in a Salika, a fairly new Salika, and um, he was in some little something, Toyota or something, and, um, and we were coming down, oh, I shouldn't say, is the statute of limitations up yet? We were coming down um, High Street, I'm not going to say where, and the car in front of me started to slow down. There are people who will slow down just in case it turns red. <laughs> They're the good drivers, you know. I'm talking about when I was young. You know, this is not me nowadays. I haven't. I've, I've only been booked once in I think ten years. You know, I'm a different person. You can't tell me off for who I was back then because that's a different human being. That is not me. I hate that kid, you know. And I do. It's a, all the bodies, every cell in your body regenerates after seven years. You're not the same person you were seven years ago, you know. Um, so all my values when I was young, I don't hold those now. Um, so, you know, you, you shouldn't be sent to jail for something you did when you, when you were young because you're not the same person. If you want to get that guy, you've got to go back in time and book that guy. But you can't book this guy. This guy is a model citizen. He's a, you know, and I am. I would never do what that guy did, ever. You know, and that's a fact. It's a very interesting point, actually. Um, so I, in no way do I condone what that guy did. Uh, but what that guy did is the car in front of him was probably my age. You know, my age now. You know, and he did what I would do right now. And he said, ooh. I know the light's still green, but it's been green for a while. I'll slow down just in case it turns yellow and then red, you know. Um, and he started to slow down. I went, fucking like this, you know. And it did turn yellow, but I still, it was 
still gold and yellow by the time I went through. But I think the priest had seen that car slowing down. And you go, Oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy... Bang! <laughs> You know, um, and it actually, I had a point, the front of my car was pointy, sporty, sporty car, you know, a poor man's sports car it was, and, um, and I was amazed, it actually sliced, and there was no one in his passenger seat, and I hit him on the passenger side, and, um, and I did think afterwards, had there been a nun, <laughs> in, in, it's not funny. I hate that guy. It's, it's you know, and that's, I'll see that guy wrapped around a pole next week, no doubt, down the road. You know, I know that. It's not funny, you know. But anyway, if there had been a nun, there would have no longer been a nun. There would have been one less than one. There would have been none, you know, and all that sort of stuff. Um, anyway, so... Uh, well, here's the evil bit. Uh, I had a, for reasons, I, I don't know why it was, but I had a video recorder. There was no such things. There was no such thing as um, iPhones. We did video. We didn't video stuff back then like that. You know, these days everyone will whip out the phone and hey, everyone's recording. The priest is recording me, and I'm recording him, and we're talking through our phones. Hello, how are you? How did that happen? You know, why'd you turn in front of me? You know. Um, well, we didn't, we didn't even, what it was, we had a priest and a good Catholic boy. Uh, and, um, we had an accident together. I was very respectful. Even when I was young, I was extremely respectful. I always have been. Um, anyway, I hopped out, but I couldn't resist this because it was an amazing scene. And we took up the whole, um, intersection, you know, West Garth Street. And, um, and it's chaos, you know. And the cars came apart, you know, and um, and so I grabbed my video recorder, which is about that big. I've got it over there in my shed. It's over there. In fact, I've got the video there too, no doubt. Uh, I'd never find it. Um, anyway, so I picked it up and I put it here and I walked towards the car recording and I've got the recording still. And, um, oh, you all right? Oh yes, I am, you know, oh, um, gee, it looks bad, and I, he, and then he said, yes, uh, and it was entirely my fault, and I said, oh, uh, well, uh, ooh. um, anyway, uh, <laughs> let's exchange names, and, you know, sir, <laughs> father, <laughs> And we exchanged names, and he was such a gentleman, and I was recording the whole time. I didn't record his face, which, you know, I showed a little bit of dignity. But he was very calm under pressure. He was practically um, zen, you know. He was very spiritual under pressure. Um, and I don't know whether I rationalised it and all that sort of stuff. Oh, you know, maybe the Catholic Church owns that car. <laughs> he wouldn't have. The priests can't own anything. Yeah. But then later I said, oh, no, maybe, you know, the Archbishop... Do you know the archbishops uh, of the Catholic Church? Uh, they um, they are brutal on the priests. I've I've had yeah. I'm no friend of well, I am. I'm friend of I'm friends with some priests, and um, if they step out of line, you know, rather than have the Catholic Church suffer um, suffer reputational damage. An archbishop will send a priest down the river faster than you can say Hail Mary ten times, the way my brother used to. Hail Mary, Holy Mary, 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 Our Father, Our Father, can I go now? You know what I'm talking about there. Confession. I had a brother. Oh, I've still got him. Oh, he got a slap. Uh, I'm not sure what he said in confession. But it ended up a police matter. <laughs> um, my brother got a slap 
from the priest. Uh, I might have, I can't remember whether this is true or not, but, you know, you know what you do in con confession, you have to come up with a sin. And as naughty as you can be, sometimes you're just not bad. You know, my grandmother used to say that, and all my children, she had seven children, this is on my father's side, and um, she said, um, I do like all my children because naughty they all may be, but none of them are bad. And she's absolutely right. They're fantastic people, all hard workers, all that sort of stuff. And none of them are bad, but very naughty, most of them. <laughs> How dare I say that about my own father <laughs> and uncles and aunties, you know. No, they're all fantastic people. There's no doubt about it. But she made that point, you know. And anyway, I, I'm not a bad person. And my brother's not a bad person. He's a good person, but he's naughty. So I always suspected that, you know, when you're a naughty boy, um, when you have to go to confession, you actually haven't done anything bad in the last week. And you're really struggling. You have to come up with something. You know? So what we used to fall back on was impure thoughts. It's a, it's a goodie. You know? and, uh, and what we used to come back on is, um, you know, you, you just think of an impure thought. You can't lose with that one. He can't prove that you didn't have that impure thought. So you just have to think of something, you know. Um, I had an impure thought about Wonder Woman, you know, Linda Carter or something, you know, back in the 70s, you know, because you're only a kid. Can you imagine that? You know, you're about four foot high. <laughs> She's about six foot. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, you like to punch above your weight when you're a kid. Anyway, um, so, um, anyway, I always thought, uh, word came through to me, I'll have to check with him whether it was true, that he said that he'd run out of impure thoughts lately and said I had an impure thought about bless me father for I have sinned it's been it's been only seven damned days since my last confession what am I doing here again you know uh, forgive me father for I have sinned I've had an I had an impure thought about sister Dimitra <laughs> is that true <laughs> was that it Cam? <laughs> Was that the one? <laughs> You'd have to meet Sister Timpano. <laughs> she was wonderful. Yeah. But I can't accuse myself of ever having had an impure thought <laughs> in that direction. Um, I've completely forgotten what this episode was about. Um, but anyway, so that priest... Uh, yeah, I ended up getting that through on insurance. Uh, but I still feel bad about it, and I feel this has been something of a confession. You know, making this episode. It's not what this episode was supposed to be about at all. What was it supposed to be about? Whatever it was supposed to be about, it's not as about, it's not as it's not going to be as interesting as all that lot was. <laughs> um but uh, oh yeah, two different truths. Two different truths. Uh both opposing. See, this is boring now to me after all that. Um, oh, by the way, I did eat my steak and it was beautiful. And my wife was saying, you shouldn't be eating the, the ch it's charred. You know, and it was pink on the inside and black on the outside. Beautiful. Yeah. It was beautiful, just right. Just like, you know, just like straight off Pete's barbecue. You know? Fantastic. And, and there is nothing wrong with that, you know. And um, it was actually on fire. The actual steak was on fire. Um, it's a really nice tasting thing. It's carcinogenic. Oh yeah, but it tastes so good, you know. What, what did my caveman ancestors invent fire for if you can't use it, you know, on a bloody mammoth you've pulled down? You want to burn that thing and eat it, you know. <laughs> I've had raw meat, actually. Uh, oh, I can't tell you every story in the world. Yeah, sushi style with the Ethiopian. I liked it actually. It made me feel primitive, you know, but classy too because sushi is classy. But um, yeah, because the Japanese do it with fish and they're classy. And the Ethiopians do it with beef and that's classy. Uh, but there was something it, it it woke me up a little bit on the inside. Um, I was at a barbecue with my goddaughter and uh, and uh, and the raw meat came around. I wasn't ready for that. I was, Khaleesi virus? 
<laughs> but you know, you like to experiment with new things. I've never eaten raw meat before, and it was high grade, you know, top quality meat. I said, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, as I was eating it, and I ate quite a lot of it, I was thinking, it tastes good. What, why do we cook it, you know? And I actually had that thought, and I said, it's making me feel so real, you know? I can imagine how the cannibals must feel, you know, when they just bite into a human. I know that sounds terrible, but there might, I bet you there's something in it, you know? Um, you know? The cannibals, you know, sometimes they just eat someone's heart. Now, I know that's absolutely terrible. Put aside your morality for a second. Now, this is the way a philosopher can think. Um, I better not send this to any of the young ones. Uh, 25 or over, I'll, I'll set it. Um, but if you can't think about these things, you're a sitting duck. For those sorts of things to happen behind closed doors, you know, um, it's like it's like the priests, as I mentioned, um, uh, you know, because we couldn't think of the possibility of those guys, you know, some of those guys being absolute predators and all that sort of stuff. They had a free run, you know. So it's better to actually look these things in the eye and discuss the bad things. I can't watch horror movies and violent movies, but, you know, I can deal with them historically. These things are factual. It's not a bad thing to think, what was so attractive about cannibalism? Because if you don't continue to think about that sort of stuff, it can come back. It really can. You know, we think we, we are so immune. Um, it can come back. Yeah. In... in with a vengeance. We only need a few things to go wrong with our society. We only need, you know, we've got a virus already. All we need is an economic crash. Um, anyway. Uh, so what was I talking about? Truths. Oh, such a boring topic now. After that. Oh, yeah, it awoken, it awakened something. It woke me, you know. Um, and I, I felt like a lion out on the savannah. <sighs> ripping straight into the hind leg of a gazelle. <coughs> you know? Now that's shocking. But if you don't admit it, you're in a lot more trouble. Now, if, if, if I did not openly admit that I enjoyed eating raw meat, uh, you know, a little bit of that Catholic guilt sort of thing, you know, Ooh, I shouldn't do this, I shouldn't do this, Arr, I'm going to do it anyway, you know? And then it tastes all that much better, you know? Um, but if you don't admit that it's a good feeling deep in your DNA from your caveman days, you're in a lot of trouble because, um, you, you know, you've got to take yourself up to those lines to recognize where those lines are. Uh, otherwise, you could accidentally trip over them or not even see someone else walking over them, and so on and so forth. You know how all that goes. Anyway, these opposing truths. Ah, yes, oh, cricket. That's boring now, after cannibalism. Uh, but it is true anyway. Two opposing truths can both be true, but that's all boring now, and I don't want to finish this episode. I wish I hadn't started with that example, uh, because it's so trite, and everyone knows it already. Oh, I was going to talk about social media. That's right. And I was going to say, ah, social media. Um, yes. So, um, social media is the platform. I often, I used to think that it's like nuclear energy. It can be used for good or for evil, you know, or religion. It can be used for good or for evil, you know, and everything, you know, a lot of things, you know. And I said, oh, it's social media, you know, it's a, it's a neutral concept, you know, it can be used for good or for evil, you know what I mean? But um, I've, I've come to change my mind on that. I think it can be used more readily for evil than for good. I've come to think that. Uh, because, you know, something simple like that, you know, the fact that two opposing truths can be both be true. You know, voting for Liberal or voting for Labour. Uh, now, which one of those is the right thing to do? Um, 
you know, if you're going for two party preferred. Okay, so the Greens and all the others are out of it, you know, um, for the purposes of this little argument right here. Is it the wrong thing? Is it the wrong thing, as the little princess would say, to vote for Liberal, you know, the Conservatives? And is it the wrong thing <laughs> to vote for Labour? Um, well, yes and yes, depending on which angle you're coming from. You know, too easy. But on um, social media, the very platform is designed such that those two people, you know, Labour and Liberal, or the other two people, one who thinks that cricket's just a stick and a ball and nothing more, and the other person who thinks it's deeply cultural, um, Social media is designed um, to get those two guys arguing, and the other two guys too, you know? Um, and, and that's why I think it tends towards the evil, even though you can do very good things on social media. I saw my whole family. I didn't see them directly because I'm not on social media, but I got screenshots, of, and people sent me screenshots of all my family having a wonderful time in the snow the other day. Uh, there was snow for the first time in a long time, and it was just lovely. You know, and I got the screenshots eventually by text message. But it was just beautiful. You know? So it can be used for beautiful things. But the design of social media is such that it encourages um, the evil more than the good. You can still be good, but I characterise it as, you know, you've got um, diamonds in the cesspit. And, um, and, and the reason it's a cesspit, uh, it tends towards the cesspit. Um, is because the, the just the, the the structure of posts and comments the way they are you've got to be pithy you know you've got to be brief or else nobody's going to read it anyway uh, you know because when I say something it's got to be hours you know if I was to say something on social media it would go to an essay thousands of words you know you know in one Facebook post you know and nobody was ever going to read any of that I I did it for a uh, uh, almost a comedy, you know, I had this comedy alias that I used to use, I had a few actually, on Facebook, I've never tried the other ones, uh, Twitter and all those ones, Instagram, but um, on Facebook, I, you know, I tried it, I tried my routine, you know, this is a routine that I do, I tried my routine out on social media, and, you know, I, I put my long essays on, which were about the, the word equivalent to one of these episodes, and, um, and I think people would just go, you know, it's just so stupid, yeah. But uh, yeah, much like if you were watching this, you'd say that's just so stupid. Why, why does he feel the need to even be putting himself on a YouTube clip? You know, well, yeah. But there is a very good reason that I'm doing this, and I've described that previously, and I don't need to again. Now, um, so um, social media is designed such that proper etiquette on social media is to end up screaming at each other in general. You know, you can buck the system and be social, but it's unsocial media uh, in, in the design. You know, that, that guy that loves cricket, he's over there, and the guy that um, thinks that, you know, it's just a, bat, it's just a stick and a ball, um, those pe you know, he's going to say cricket's just a stick and a ball. And that's his post, you know, and he's got a little image of a stick and a ball. And that guy actually gets upset because he's got that distance between that guy. They're, they're virtual to each other. It's a little bit like people who are driving in the car. Did I mention that before? Did I almost mention that before? You know, you get two people walking down the street and uh, one cuts the other one off and there's not that much screaming. But put, a, put those two people in a cocoon, make them a little bit virtual, you know, anonymous and away from the other, and, um, and a car cuts in in front of them and there's no danger. You know in most cases, um, and, uh, and, you know, hey, old Mary, off to confession you go, um, but, you know, it's on for young and old because you put that distance, you know, and then social media is more distance, you know, you're, you're basically two people in the car, 
two people in two different cars and you're both honking at the same time you know and in cars you know people who are road raging each other like uh, i hear russell crowe's got a new show i haven't watched a movie for a good eight nine years the last movie i watched was with my wife um was uh james bond the it's been a while since the last james bond movie has it and it wasn't the pre the last one it was skyfall yeah, that's the last movie I've seen. I don't watch movies, except for kids' movies, when my kids force me to. Um, I like Harry Potter, huh? and I liked Madagascar the first time I watched it, too. Um, that's funny. Uh, I, I like the penguins. <laughs> anyway, honking. People honk at each other, because there's that distance. Look, there's the occasional uh, nut job, uh, aggressive person who does it for real live you know somebody you know you're in a you're in a milk bar in a milk bar and someone comes in they don't even see you they go oh hello can i have a loaf of bread excuse me i was here first you know somehow you sort of go all cerebral palsy <laughs> have a, uh, oh, so, oh i'm sorry well it's just not good enough <laughs> Let the person order. Just wait for a bit. It doesn't matter. They weren't being rude. They didn't see you. <laughs> yeah, there's all that, you know. But, um... Look, I don't think I can top that cerebral palsy. Cerebral? <laughs> cerebral palsy, um... Impression. Oh, you've got to know when you've gone as low as you can go. I'll cease this episode, but... And it was another one that was a lot of fun. <laughs> you like all that little rhyming slang I just did then, you know? I could be a rapper if I kept that thing up. <laughs> yeah, okay, good night. Um.